So I figured I would introduce our four panelists. Um, I did some background research. And after a week or two, um, I mean, time zones are killing, so getting to talk to all of them at the same time is impossible. I decided that it was a lot better idea to just have them do it, because they kind of know who they are and what they've been working on. Uh, so I'll leave it to them to, uh, one by one, introduce themselves to you. You're first. Uh, great. Uh, I'm Michael Arsted. I'm a designer, front-end designer and developer, and I work at Automatic. I work on WordPress.com, Jetpack, and I'm a committer to WordPress core um, for some reason. <laughs> I'm not fully aware of, but <laughs> other than that, I mean, yeah, that's, that's just what I do. I design a lot of stuff. I make things pretty, but more importantly, I make it so that people can actually use it, and I really don't care if robots use it, so great. All right, I'm, uh, I'm Joe Dalson. I'm a contributor to the accessibility team. I'm self-employed, I'm a plugin developer and web accessibility consultant. And uh, for Core, I help try and review things and make sure they're usable by people with disabilities and also contribute a lot of my time to the theme review team uh, to help uh, look at themes that have been submitted and try and make sure that they're also usable by people with disabilities. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Tina. I am part of the SiteGround team and um, I'm only mentioning this because uh, I got involved with WordPress community because of our company sponsoring a lot of WordCamps. Um, after going to a lot of WordCamps, I got excited about organizing WordCamps myself. So I guess that makes me active on the community team uh, who's mostly responsible for uh, growing the WordPress community through different programs like Meetup organizer meetups and WordCamps and various outreach programs. And I guess that's it. And I'm Gary Pendergast. I'm employed by Automatic, but I uh, spend my I'm full time working on WordPress Core and on WordPress.org, um, mostly to do with emoji. Uh, but um, <laughs> ge general kind of core architecture and uh, those kind of techno technical problems. All right, so I'll quickly introduce myself as well, so then you know who's the guy asking the questions here. I'm Taco, I work at Yoast as a community manager, and um, well, basically the uh, WordCamp US organizers tricked me into making their life miserable for the next couple of minutes, which I happily do. Um, so the goal is to, uh, well, explain to you, to show you why contributing to WordPress is awesome, why sh you should do it more, and uh, also why you should make your boss pay for it. Any bosses around here that aren't <laughs> paying yet for? None, I figured, <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's start with an easy question. Um, why do you contribute to WordPress? I mean, Tina, you mentioned it already, but Michael, why? Why? I don't. <laughs> All right, I'll be honest. I started contributing to WordPress because I thought it was pretty bad. Uh, <laughs> like, and I had just gained enough skills to go, oh, I can make this look slightly better here. <laughs> And so I did, and then it turns out a lot of people were like, oh, great, a designer, we could use that. You, you do this and this and over, you know, I got really uh, excited, a lot of positive feedback, and uh, I learned a lot over the last several years working on it. So that's, that's how I got started and why I continue to c contribute is just uh, so I can make the product better for me to use. And then it also benefits a lot of other people, especially when we do things uh, like working with Joe to make it more accessible for people. Um, that, that's a huge win, I think. Uh, so I spent a lot of time kind of fiddling with little things like focus styles and stuff like that. Cool. Is, is that the same for you, Joe? Did you start because you thought it sucked? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't going to use exactly that wording. <laughs> Um, but essentially, yes, it's the same reason. I mean, as an accessibility consultant and developer, I needed to be using a platform that could offer my clients uh, something accessible that they could use. And WordPress was really pretty good, but it wasn't where I needed it to be. So, uh, well, you know, I can work on this. I can make it into the product I need it to be. All right. So, um, 
that that makes me wonder does contributing to wordpress take a lot of time i mean i've heard full time on wordpress from you um does it stick with like 40 hours a week or do you even uh spend more time on it um that can vary wildly it's uh, kind of a choose your own adventure there um for for a lot of people they they'll uh contribute um a small amount of their time or just uh sporadically whenever uh, whenever something takes their interest which which absolutely works we have several hundred people who contribute in that manner with every release uh, but at the other end of the scale there's uh, there are a handful of folks who also work full-time and then towards the end of a release cycle it can get a bit ridiculous but uh, it's it's a it's a pretty good um, pretty good situation it's pretty easy to balance all right, so I, I know, I mean, I know most of them personally, and I know from you, Tina, that you have uh, two and a half full-time jobs at SiteGround. So how do you combine that? Where do you find time to contribute? Um, so yeah, it, I was gonna say that if you decide to contribute, the good thing about it is that you can choose how much you want to dedicate it. Uh, to it, but when you get into organizing an event like WordCamp Europe, which is like a massive, huge, how many people, like more than a thousand, or WordCamp US, for example, it can be very time consuming. So when I was organizing WordCamp Europe 2014, I worked almost full time for four months on it, and Siron was generous enough to pay for my time. But it can be very frustrating because you have other things to do. Like, this is not my full-time job. And um, I, I also work with people. I have people to manage. And because I was contributing to organizing the WordCamp, I was away from them. And uh, that's, that kind of makes you feel a little bit anxious, at least to say. So it can be frustrating at times. And I think that's the biggest struggle for me personally. Um, how do you balance? It's hard. Um, but you just have to, I think that the key here is when you get excited about contributing, very, a lot of people um, commit themselves to more things that they can do. So I guess my tip for you would be, be very realistic about how much time you can dedicate and start small. Like you don't have to do everything. Um, you can start just by captioning a video on wordpress.tv and that's, that's a contribution that will count. Um, so yeah, just don't commit to way too many things and try to balance your time better. That would be a tip that I would share. Well, and, and on average, how much time do you spend in, in general? I mean, a number of, um, a week, is it five minutes and then 10 times a day? Or is it like 15 minutes once a week? Um, how do you distribute your, your time contributing and your normal work. Maybe. Joe, can you, can you answer that? Well, uh, that, that is really complicated. Like I mentioned, I'm self-employed. So any time I'm spending contributing to WordPress is time I'm not spending running my business or working for my clients or essentially getting paid. Um, uh, so I have to balance it very carefully. But I do look at it in the long-term picture where because I'm contributing to a product I'm using for my business, it is part of developing my business. It is helping me. So any time does have a real benefit. That said, essentially it fluctuates wildly for me. Um, one week I'll be able to spend 10 minutes popping in and out of a meeting and then the next week, I'll spend an entire day trying to resolve a particular patch. Uh, and I have no idea what's really going to happen, because to me, it all depends on what deliverables I have for clients at any given time. And sometimes that means I can't do anything, uh, and sometimes it means I've got plenty of time, or if, sometimes it even means because I have a project for a client, I have to finish solving this bug because they need this bug fixed. That's a rare case, but it's really great when it happens. <laughs> I can imagine that that feels like being paid for working on WordPress, right? Kind of, yeah. All right, so would you uh, say that if someone has five minutes a week to spend on contributing, that would be enough to be helpful? 
Uh, that depends on what they're doing. Uh, honestly, five minutes a week as a long-term practice doesn't really get anything done. Um, it takes more than five minutes just to write a good ticket. Uh, I mean, and by good ticket, I mean a ticket where somebody can come in and read it and say, oh, I can reproduce this problem, I know what's going on. Um, and you can't do that in five minutes. Five minutes is enough to kind of say, oh, yeah, I can see this problem, I'll come back and make a ticket later. So I would say no, five minutes a week isn't, isn't going to do it. But if you can save up your five minutes and have half an hour one day in a week, yes, you can do something with that. So then you know what to tell your bosses. Five minutes, not going to cut it, make it more. I mean, we're, we're trying to convince the audience here to contribute more, right? So, um, I guess I have something to add to that. Um, my WordCamp Europe organizing experience gave me the confidence that we as a business can probably um, ex organize more community events. So after we, I, did, I was involved with WordCamp Europe, we've successfully organized PHP conferences uh, for more than 700 people. Um, like we did it twice already. And I attribute um, my WordCamp Europe experience to m taking the decision to do it. Um, so if you ever question whether it's worth to contribute back, I definitely think it is. And um, to me personally, it's been very, uh, it's been an amazing learning experience because uh, you learn a ton of things by working with other people and other contributors because the way it work is done uh, in a community aspect is very different than the way that, than the work that I'm used to do at SiteGround. So that alone is worth the experience. Um, yeah, I think that's that's a valuable addition uh, for sure. Um, so when looking into this to prepare for for this panel. Um, I ran into a system called Track, and as a uh, normal WordPress user, I must say that I see this Track thing in, in several places. Can you help me understand what it is, Gary or, or Michael? I saw you grab your mic. Um. So Track is our bug tracker system. It's where all, all, all bugs and all features are, uh, are listed and worked on and uh, patches are uploaded, people test them, so on and so forth. So it's, if, if you run into a bug with, um, with WordPress, then Track is the, is the place to look. And, that's, um, and it's the place to, uh, if, if you find a bug, write a ticket. Um, then you're also welcome to submit a patch, but there are also a lot of other people who go through and look at new tickets and say, okay, I can reproduce this, here's a patch that'll fix it, and that gets into core. So as far as like um, contributing for your business, if you run into a problem while you're doing work, then you can make WordPress better specifically for your case. Um, and then it's people People like everyone up here who'll uh, who kind of look at what, whatever your uh, whatever your issue is and think, okay, well, we can uh, make it better for a, a huge number of people if we tweak it a little bit or something like that. All right, want to add to that, or was that a complete description of of track? I would say that's a pretty good technical description of track uh, to kind of bring it down a level. It's it's a good place to report problems. Like if you have problems with WordPress or anything. Um, you can report it there. Uh, it might be a duplicate. That's fine. There's people who keep track of that, and we'll, we'll mark it as such, and um, we'll point you in the right direction. Uh, it's a good place to kind of see how the process happens, see how WordPress is made. Um, I would, you know, there's just lots of little weird, quirky tickets. It's also a good place to get started, to go in and find that ticket you're hoping to spend only five minutes on, and get roped in and work on it for 20 hours that week. <laughs> Uh, which sounds not great, but it's a lot of fun because there's a lot of cool people, a lot of very smart people. So you can write a patch, uh, which I didn't know how to do uh, a while ago. I mean, everything about writing a patch was really scary to me because you have to use terminal and do all sorts of weird stuff. But people walk you through it. Uh, you learn a lot. You have the best people in the world reviewing your code, um, except for Gary, maybe. 
<laughs> Shots I still, fired. I still don't know why they let me uh, do this, but you know, here I am. All right, so um, can anyone post, post on track or do you need something special? Uh, do you need permission to be a core committer to, to write there? Absolutely not. Anyone can post. Just make, make a WordPress.org account and uh, post away. In fact, you've got an awful lot of power on track without anything more than a WordPress.org account. You can close tickets. You can change focuses. Uh, you know, that's a good thing to wait to do until you've maybe got a feeling for what's going on. I had a, a, a battle with somebody recently who kept closing a ticket that needed to stay open. And yeah, I think it went back and forth like four times. <laughs> track is a little intimidating to use because it's a really janky UI is the nicest way I can say it. You won't break anything, though. If you accidentally close something, Joe will reopen it, and you'll have a nice little battle. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that brings me to the next question. I mean, you said that UI for track is maybe not optimal. Um, might even call it suboptimal. Um, what what does anyone on the design team do? Is that work actually on track, or is it st do you stick with WordPress itself, or only design themes? What what does your team do? That's a great question. So the team wildly varies uh, because it's had a it has a lot of people drop in for short spurts over time. We see a lot of familiar faces, but there's like a few people that regularly uh, contribute and they sort of split their effort. Um, like I said, once you get involved, well, I, didn't, I guess I didn't say this, once you get involved, like you make a lot of friends and all sorts of stuff, so people will start um, going to you for design advice early on, uh, which is where I spend a lot of my time, is somebody will say, okay, hey, we wanna do this, this thing in the customizer, and we're thinking about going this route, what do you think, what can we do here? So you'll, then I'll spend some time on core. Uh, as far as track goes, I think people are afraid to touch it, and it's not just that, it's. Uh, really hard to touch. It's a very uh, difficult thing to work with. It's it's not uh, just the way it's set up. The technology behind it makes it really hard to modify. So we could redesign it. Um, I think there are rumors about to spread um, of us maybe trying something else, uh, which is similar to track in a lot of ways, but potentially with uh, better better project flows. Um, track works though. It, it's it doesn't matter if it's pretty. It's easy to follow. Well, it's followable. <laughs> <laughs> um, and once you get the hang of it, it's, it can be an effective communication tool, especially across time zones and, and locality. It's, it's, it's actually a pretty great tool, even despite it being a scary UI. All right. So let's, let's step away from track for a bit, yeah. because we've talked about that uh, quite a bit. Um, if I'm into theme developing, I mean, we saw that quite a few people in, in the audience have themes. Uh, would they have any value to add to the design team? Yeah, absolutely. So theming is a great way to get into uh, either interface design or more theme design. We do a theme every year that could definitely use some help and some uh, extra people with eyes on it, polishing it, testing it, giving giving some valuable feedback. So yeah, definitely. And uh, feel free to just drop into the design channel or uh, reach out to any of us. Um, Tammy Lister, who's somewhere around here taking photos, and Hugo are good people to reach out to as well as me. Um, Mel Choice does a lot of work on the design team. Um, all of us, feel free to reach out. We'll help you find a good fit um, in terms of what you want to do. If you're just interested in committing, don't know where to start, we'll, we'll get you going. Like, So that makes me wonder, is there, I mean, uh, Gary, you're mainly working on core. Do you need designers as well, or are you sticking with just developers? Uh, yes. We, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't ask two questions, yeah. I know. <laughs> Sorry. Yes to both, no. Uh, we, we always love design help. It's, um, WordPress is a very visual product. It's, um, it, it has a lot of, lot of user interface that needs to be thought about, the user experience, so... Uh, um, people helping out with design is always appreciated. Right, so you're kind of fighting for designers, both of you, and and the other teams, accessibility and 
in the community? Well, I mean, accessibility, uh, we're working with everybody. Um, because every time, I mean, we are spending a lot of time thinking about the non-visual experience with WordPress, but there are major accessibility factors in the visual presentation as well, and we have to make sure that those work out. So every time we're looking to make a modification to the structure of a page, we'll generally need to talk to somebody on the design team and say, hey, this is the change we need to make. How should it look? Uh, and then we'll work together to reach a conclusion that works for everybody. And the design team works very similarly. It's across a lot of the teams. Um, it's, it's not really like, this is a, the design team doesn't really own a product. It, it, it's more like the accessibility team where it works across everything that WordPress, the WordPress community, like all of the products uh, together. So there's a lot, a lot involved. And we reach out, we work across teams pretty well. Um, yeah. The community team needs designers too. Mm -hmm. Right now there is a project about, as you, the community team is mostly helping people to organize WordCamps. And as many people are first time organizers and they don't really know how to deal with badges and schedules and all that. So right now the community team has a project of creating like a design kit uh, with the most commonly used, um, needed uh, print stuff, print materials. So yes, if you are good with graphic design, you can contribute with that too for the community team. So we've been talking about designers, but does the, ga the, the same goes for other disciplines? I mean, developers, are they needed across the board or maybe even other skills? I mean, what are you lacking in your, your teams? What are you really needing to uh, move forward? Uh, again, developers are welcome everywhere. There's, um, there's obviously there's core, but apart from that, there's the, there's the WordPress.org website, which, uh, which people, people contribute to. And um, we're, we're working on, there is uh, some private code there, which, is, uh, with, which we're working on uh, pushing out and making it more easy, making it easier for uh, people to uh, contribute. There's uh, WordCamp, uh, the WordCamp websites, which uh, you can you can pretty easily get up and running and contribute to that to to help WordCamps around the world to um, uh, to have really cool sites. I mean, the accessibility team always needs more people because I mean, essentially what we need is more accessibility people embedded in every other team uh, because we need people in support and we need people in design and we need people in community. Um, because accessibility, like design, is just one of those things that's across the board. It's needed in every single area. Um, so you can always find a place to fit somebody. Yeah, so talking about accessibility, I've um, heard that you work a lot with screen readers to, to test for uh, that, yeah, the visually, um, well, how should I put that correctly? Non-visual experience. Non-visual <laughs> experience. Thank you very much. Um, does that mean that if you want to help out with accessibility that you need to purchase like a super expensive uh, product? Or how does that work? Are those available? Uh, first of all, no, you definitely don't need to, expense to, to buy an expensive product. Um, first of all, if you do want to do any testing with a screen reader, you probably already have one. Because if you're running a Mac, you have VoiceOver. If you have an iPhone or an iPad, you have VoiceOver. If you have an Android, you have their app called TalkBack. And it's already installed, it just has to be enabled. Um, but that said, you really don't need a screen reader to test for most accessibility. And in many ways, if you're not an expert using a screen reader, it might be better that you don't, because they are very difficult to use. And if you're not familiar with them and comfortable with the experience, what you may come away with is that, oh, this is terrible, when in fact, the ex it, it's terrible because you didn't understand what to do and you didn't know how to use it. Um, so screen reader testing is crucial. You need, for good accessibility, to do some testing with a screen reader, but you really need to do it with somebody who knows how it works. Um, it can be really valuable if you get a little familiarity to just do some very discreet testing and be able to start up your screen reader and verify this small interaction works. But on the overall usability scale of whether or not this website works well with the screen reader, 
uh, that's a much harder problem that needs to be looked at by an expert. And usually that's not me. I'm an expert in accessibility, but that does not make me an expert screen reader user. That makes me a hack screen reader user. All right, so um, we've been talking a bit about what to do and uh, why you started, but I mean, it costs time. It, especially if you have your own company, it, it sort of takes time away from making money. What keeps you contributing to WordPress? What's the, what, what, why are you still doing this? Michael? Uh, I don't, well, that's a good question. Um, I think the, there are a lot of different answers from a lot of different people. I would say that there's a, a lot of huge benefits to contributing. Um, first of all, if you're a designer and you're interested in accessibility, it's a great place to get your feet wet there because you have a great set of resources available. You can learn about semantic markup and like what you can do to try to prep a, a, a form or something for a screen reader. Uh, even if you're not super familiar, they'll, they'll be like, oh, that you can do these or add these tags or whatever you need to do or rearrange that um, and learn a lot that way. So you, you, you will learn a huge amount. And I'm constantly learning a lot. Um, but more importantly, you'll probably advance your career pretty well. If you're a freelancer, you'll make a lot more contacts. You'll get a lot more visibility. Um, if, if you uh, work for a company, your company will have a better product that they get to use ultimately. Um, and we'll have you as kind of an insider. So if you run into something goofy like the login screen, it's kind of annoying to change the background color of without setting it multiple places. You can step in and like go to core and change a couple lines of code and it benefits everyone as well as your company. So you don't have to like do that extra, extra work. So you can do a lot of stuff like that where you're actually benefiting your products. Um, I, I think the biggest is you're just gonna advance y your, your knowledge and your career. Um, no matter what path you take, whether it's accessibility or developer or designer, uh, you just meet a lot of people. Your network will grow uh, to a huge size where you know people all over the world that are experts in all sorts of different little things. So if you have just some random question, you can ask them um, with confidence that they'll at least point you in the right direction. Uh, I keep contributing because I really uh, like the idea of making a product that anybody can make a site on. Uh, even when I didn't like the UI at first, I still really liked the product, to be clear. Um, and I want to keep that going. I want to keep that idea going that, you know, my parents can uh, get a host and create a site about training their new dog, like, or create a shop, or whatever it is. Like, I, I like the confidence that people can do that. All right, and how about you, Tina? Um, I, like what he said, very much is true about me. So I keep contributing, although not as much as I used to. Um, but I, I started organizing events because I like doing that. And like I already said, like this experience helped me learn a lot and expanded my network. Um, and um, personally, I just enjoy it. But I also wanted to say, because I'm here representing a business, and for us, uh, giving back and contributing to the community is crucial, and there is one very ethical element to that. Um, we're a hosting provider, and if it wasn't for WordPress, we would probably, well, I wouldn't say we wouldn't be in the business, but it will be very different. So we basically are very much aware of how much we owe to this community for us to be in the business, and it makes a lot of sense to make sure that, and also with competitors, Squarespace, Wix, and other CMSs, we just want to make sure that WordPress continues to be as awesome as it is and stay competitive. So also, we are relevant on the market. So it makes a lot of business sense for us to continue to be involved and sponsor WordCamps and speak at WordCamps and even help more people get involved with it. Do you have a, a similar drive, Joe? Well, I mean, for me, it, it, it is all about the passion for accessibility um, because by working on WordPress, I can you know, write a few lines of code and get it committed and then ship it out to a quarter of the web. And uh, that's a way I can make a very immediate and large impact on the world. Uh, and making a difference really matters to me. So uh, WordPress is a place where I can contribute some time and it makes a huge difference. 
compared to building an accessible website where I'm building, maybe I build the absolutely perfect, most accessible website imaginable, it's still one website that a small handful of people will go to. Um, whereas in WordPress, I can make a handful of changes that affect so many more people. All right, and the same question, of course, for you as well, Gary? Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I work full-time on WordPress, but it's also by choice. If I, if I didn't love what I did, then I'd, be, I'd switch to a different project in the, in the, within the company. Uh, so, so certainly it's, um, it's something I love. It's some, like working with really interesting people, working on big, challenging problems. Uh, it's, 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 it's a job that never really gets boring. Uh, so that's cool. And as, as Joe was saying, being able to, like write, writing code, writing, uh, writing new features that are being shipped out to over a quarter of the internet is, it's a bit of a rush. It's pretty fun. Um, it's, I, I, like, I like being able to think about the problems of where, or how will WordPress influence the direction of the entire internet. All right. So before we move to questions from the audience, because I'm pretty sure that you will have questions um, for those amazing people up here, um, there's one thing I'd like to, to talk about, uh, and that is basically something uh, Matt Mullenweg said in 2014. He was talking about Five for the Future. Um, basically, he was calling out companies and, and everyone in our ecosystem in our community to contribute 5% of time, of resources, of um, uh, what have you, to WordPress, to make sure that WordPress would continue as a project and that WordPress would, would grow and keep growing in, in the future. Um, that makes me wonder, what do you see as uh, a valuable way to spend that 5% resources? Is that by uh, throwing money at WordCamps, for example? Or uh, do you see more value in um, uh, promoting uh, the, contributing to, to the project in, in other ways? I think uh, you, you can contribute in whatever way works for your company. That's if, if you, uh, if you have the the people to to um, to contribute, then absolutely. Then uh, people can write code, people can design things. Um, it's if you if you have uh, support support engineers, then they can help out on the forums and help people with their WordPress questions. Uh, if you have uh, documentation folks, then there's always documentation to be written, the handbooks, the code documents, um, or if you prefer. Um, using money, like it's running WordCamps and making them, uh, making them cheaply available, like the ticket today was $40. That's Correct, yeah. Making that available so cheaply to everyone uh, is only possible through, um, through sponsors. So you sponsor, you get, you get your name up on the screen behind us and um, uh, you also make it, uh, make the WordPress community really accessible for people to, to get into and learn about. And I think it's, uh, it's important to think about the fact that that 5% that for the future is it's for the future of WordPress, um, but it's also for the future of your company. So if you're not spending that 5% in a way that supports your company's needs as they relate to WordPress, then that's maybe not what your company needs to do. So the best way your company can do it has to be at some level of self-interest to your company. All right. Um, so, are there questions from the audience? Things you really like to know? Uh, since we have a couple of mics here, I'll be repeating your questions also for the video um, instead of running around with a with a mic today. Uh, so, yeah, that you first hand to be raised. So um, the question is: Is there a way to? Um, uh, is there uh, sorry? Uh, is there a plan to uh, extend WordPress or create a light version uh, to make it available for Internet of Things? 
can, can I answer this one? <laughs> you can. <laughs> You're eager. I can see that. Uh, just a reminder, I'm a designer. Uh, but WordPress has an API, right? And uh, it's, it's pretty dang awesome. In fact, I saw some cool stickers for it floating around earlier. Uh, couldn't you use the API um, to, to speak to your internet or to your devices? Or are you talking about using WordPress as like an operating system on the devices? Oh, then I don't know. <laughs> uh, to use as an operating system on the devices? No. Um, the, I mean, they, they need special, the Internet of Things devices need specialized software, which WordPress isn't the thing for that. However, those things generally have an API that can be talked to. So absolutely, you, if you want to have uh, a website to control your house, then you can do it as a WordPress plugin. You write a plugin that talks to all of your, talks to all of your things. You, you can turn your lights on and off from, uh, from your blog. You can let other people turn your lights on and off. <laughs> I'm not sure that's the best idea, though. <laughs> Maybe enable two-factor authentication. <laughs> <laughs> All right, question in front here. Yeah, uh, I'm wondering, uh, I want to uh, start converting back to uh, WordPress, uh, but which is the best way to do, uh, to do it? Because I know, I know that there's a lot of effort for, uh, that is being put into Calypso. Uh, Okay, so to summarize your, your question, what is the best way to start contributing given that Calypso and the current backend are? No, my, my, my question is more like, is there a, uh, an expiration date on the current admin? Is there an expiration date on the current admin? Yeah. Well, that's a straightforward question. Gary? <laughs> uh, no. So Calypso is an automatic product. So if you go to... Uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with it. So on WordPress.com, rather than using the standard WordPress dashboard, then there's uh, it's a completely new uh, dashboard experience called Calypso. Um, whether so, the the dashboard as it exists in WordPress today uh, will likely change. It will be it will be influenced by the things that uh, that have been learned from Calypso. Um, it'll certainly start using uh, the um, the REST API endpoints that have that are being released in WordPress 4.7, but the the dashboard that's in in WordPress today is not a end of life product. It's something that's going to keep evolving. All right, so I'm going to move this way. Yes, please. I'm curious about headless WordPress. Curious. And uh, um, does that, I mean, headless WordPress contributing to it, or? I'm just curious about, I'm new to WordPress, um, but I'm in development, so I'm just kind of the question All right, so um, maybe that's a question that's better asked after the, the panel, and we'll stick to contributing for, for now. Perfect question. So how do you start contributing to WordPress? Where, where do you go? Well, the first step would be to go to a meetup or a WordCamp. So you're on the right way. <laughs> um, you know, around WordCamps, usually before or after the event, there is something called Contributor Day. So you can, you, I advise you to definitely go to those days and learn more. Like there are people from the various teams um, so it, they can walk you through and explain what you can do for each uh, team uh, on the global uh, WordPress uh, community team. Other than that, you can go to make.wordpress.org and uh, there you will see all the various teams that are available and basically get familiar with what each team does and choose for yourself where you want to uh, get involved with. Also, you can go on Slack. Um, and what else? I think that covers it pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Slack, <laughs> Slack the, the website and... Oh, yes, and there is a contributor table, getting involved table right in the hallway with the sponsors. Immediately out here. 
Yes, so you can go there and there are people from the community team who can also walk you through and um, answer more questions for you. Yeah, so I think the quickest way is to make sure that you're here on Sunday yeah. for the Contributor Day. Uh, will all of you be here for Contributor Day as well? Yes. Perfect. Yes. I yeah. will not be here. You, you have your representatives yes, to... Yes, but a lot of people from the community team will be here, definitely. Yeah, so this Sunday is probably the easiest way to start because you can sit right next to the people that are experienced and I'm sure they'll be happy to help you getting started. So absolutely make sure that you come to Contributor Day. It's super valuable. Right behind you, yeah. Well, that is a good question. Let me summarize that really quickly. So uh, if you have a new feature that you would like to introduce, how to, how to do that? How to get a new feature into WordPress? Well, there are a lot of different scales of new features. Uh, if it's a relatively minor thing, you can just report it on track and label it as an enhancement and, and say, this is something we'd like to add and like to improve this. Um, but for major features, you know, those are most commonly lately done as feature plugins. Uh, and then that's a big project. And you need to get people involved, you need to get buy-in, there needs to be community support for the concept uh, for it to gain traction and get tested and potentially in the future get merged. Um, and that, that's a complicated process because if it's a major feature, that means it's changing a lot of things. And w a really important thing to know about a feature is what else it touches. And, and Gary knows all about what else it touches. <laughs> yeah, well, starting with a, feature pro with a big feature project, I would not recommend as the first thing to, <laughs> uh, to get into with contributing. It is, it is a big process. It starts like, it starts, like thinking about the, uh, the design and the user experience. And, then moves on to uh, to developing the code, and then moves on to user testing and uh, making sure the accessibility is good, and uh, all and all that kind of thing. It can be a very long-term process. It's um, not not the place to start. But that said, there are existing feature projects which are which you can absolutely uh, get involved in. Uh, they're run by people who, ha who have experience building features. So it's kind of a way to be able to build cool new things um, without needing to worry about fitting into the uh, WordPress release cycle or tackling bugs or anything like that. Well, so the short answer is probably make sure you're there on Sunday <laughs> and they'll happily help you. Um, that was it for this panel. We flew through it. So I'd like to thank you very, very much and see you all on Sunday.